right, today I'm reviewing the Bioderma Photoderm Max Cream. And really quick, I just want to say I purchase all these products with my own money. I'll never waste your time with sponsored ads or videos. So if you want to help support the channel, check out nobsbeauty.com, check out my Patreon community, or click on the Amazon link below. Okay, so finally getting to the other Bioderma sunscreen I have. And now that I've found more sites that I can smuggle products in, I'm excited I've got three more in my cart. Although I don't really need three more, but I just want to try them all. And they're on sale, so anyway. I'm really getting good at this smuggling stuff. I don't know, I might have to take it up a notch to maybe like acids, maybe start smuggling in some really good BHA products. I don't know. I guess I'll I'll see what I can move up to in the world. Okay, so uh, Bioderma calls this a sunscreen with cellular bioprotection patent to improve skin's defenses against the sun, UVA protection of 42, and UVB protection of 50 plus. And when they talk about UVA protection of 42, they are going off the PPD, Persistent Pigment Darkening Grading System. And I believe anything that's a 16 and over is like rated the best or like PA with four pluses after it. And this one's got 42. So 16 is great. 42 is like out of this world, which is amazing. Okay, nourishing cream that is easy to spread. The skin is protected and hydrated, fragrance-free, non-comedogenic, hypoallergenic, and water-resistant. Okay, so we get to my first criteria, which is packaging. And you know what I noticed? A lot of sunscreens come in yellow bottles. I don't know why that is, but so many of them do. Just as looking through all my thumbnails, I'm like, yellow, yellow, yellow. What one is that? What one is that? Anyway, I don't quite get it, but I have no problem with it. Um, in terms of denatured or drying types of alcohol, this does not contain any of those. It does contain C20-22 alcohols, which are fatty types of alcohol, which are good or hydrating for skin. So, um, I don't know. So many of these alcohols contain a lot of alcohol, but Bioderm has figured out how to do it without it. So what are they doing, or what do they know that all these other brands don't? I don't know. They know something. Um, okay, so you get to fragrance, and there's no fragrance ingredients. Although it has a very, very mild, almost like corn smell. Like it smells a little bit like corn, but it goes away pretty quickly. I don't know how else to describe. Maybe corn bread? Just a very light, almost barely noticeable scent. My nose is very sensitive though, so I don't know. But it's not bad. It doesn't bother me. So uh, The manufacturing location for this one is France, so no issues with that. Uh, SPF on this one is 50 plus and... Uh, since it's made in France, they are only allowed to go up to 50. So anything with a 50 plus indicates really good coverage, probably 60 or above from what I'm hearing from uh, you guys. So it's pretty impressive protection from UVB rays. Then we get to the UVA protection factor. And this one is excellent, far, far above average. This has like A++ uh, UVA protection. Uh, the PPD level is 42 or PPD number. Um, anything over 20 on the PPD number is considered awesome, great, excellent. 16 and above is uh, passing, I guess. So the protection of this one is just ridiculously high, which makes it a great option for those who spend a lot of time outside, those who have significant hyperpigmentation issues, those who have a history of skin cancer, makes uh, the Bioderma sun sunscreens a really great option. So they have done an amazing job with their photoderm line. I've been impressed with both of them. Now I'm going to be buying more. So, okay, the filters used for this one, we've got Uvenil N539, uh, which is also known as octocrylene, which is an oil-soluble chemical sunscreen agent which protects skin in the UVB range and somewhat in the UVA range. Uh, and it's also one that helps evobenzone be a bit more stable more effective and it's also one that people can have a lot of uh, allergies to I think it's one of the more common ingredients where people are reporting um, side effects or allergies from it so keep that one in mind then we've got Tinsorb M which is a hybrid filter that both reflects and absorbs both UVB and UVA rays which is impressive uh, then we've got evobenzone there we go the UVA ray absorber 
And then Tinsorb S, a filter, a very photo stable filter, which absorbs both UVB and UVA rays. So a pretty good impressive lineup of filters that they've used. Then we get to white cast and um, I'm kind of impressed with this one. So it applies pretty nicely. There is a very, very mild white cast. I know right now it looks pretty blinding, but once it absorbs, it's more mild. So not super, super noticeable and the more uh, it absorbs into skin the less it looks, but it is a mild, very mild white cast. And how the longer you wear it, the less it's noticeable. But if you're going to reapply it, that also becomes a bit more of an issue because the white cast you're applying over foundation and things like that. So we'll talk more about re reapplying things and how often you have to do it during the live stream. But anyway, once it absorbs, the white cast is very, very mild, not super noticeable. Uh, then we've got texture, which it's got kind of a lotiony cream texture to it, which uh, absorbs pretty quickly once you smooth it in. Um, once it absorbs, though, it sets to kind of a sticky and tacky finish. It's almost like it doesn't fully feel like it dries down. Um, so if you apply foundation over it, it's not going to be as big of a deal, but it is very slightly tacky and kind of sticky. Not as bad as some other ones I've tried, like the Drunk Elephant sunscreens. Those are always super tacky to me, but it is slightly sticky and tacky. And I would say the finish for this one is slightly radiant. Uh, if you'd like a matte finish, their Photo Fluid one I reviewed is kind of a better option. Um, but this one sets to kind of a more natural radiant finish, which is slightly sticky. So not the worst, not the best, but pretty decent still overall. Then we get to ease of use, and it does take a bit of smoothing and effort to really apply it and to get it to smooth over evenly. It takes a bit of effort. The texture is rather hydrating, so this works better, in my opinion, if you apply it directly over a serum instead of using, like, you typically in the morning I'll use a essence, then a serum, and then a moisturizer, and then my sunscreen. This one works better if you just eliminate the moisturizer step and just apply it directly over a serum just because it is rather hydrating. Um, seems to feel like it creates a bit of a seal over skin, which is probably because of the water resistance. So it can be a bit fussy to apply certain foundations over them. Usually foundations that are rather hydrating or emollient can be a bit iffy to apply over and then foundations that are super matte can also be a bit tricky, but overall, it's still pretty easy to use. It's just not dummy proof, which is probably why it took me a month to figure it out. No, I'm just kidding. Ha ha ha, I'm so funny. <laughs> I really can be funny when I try, though. So anyway, okay, antioxidants and beneficial ingredients in this one. We've got a lot of hydrating and moisturizing ingredients, a lot of slip ingredients in this one. We've also got a few good ingredients. We've got Mannitol, xylitol, fructololosaccharides, which are great hydrating and uh, moisturizing ingredients. Uh, then we've got ramnos, ramnos, which is a uh, ingredient which has demonstrated positive effects in both epidermal and dermal compartments of in vitro reconstructed skin. Moreover, such in vitro findings were obtained that it has an effect on collagen four and pro collagen one production. Um, so that's great for skin then we've got a ingredient which is known a which is a brown seaweed known as antileukine 6 i'm sure i slaughtered the name of that uh, it's an ingredient that helps protect skin from oxidative stress caused by overexposure to sunlight so that makes it uh, a natural fit for a sunscreen uh, it's also rich in plant sterols that support the skin in a wide range of ways and then we've got ectoin, which is an ingredient that helps protect the skin from environmental stressors, such as natural light and pollutants. So we don't have a super long list of antioxidants and beneficial ingredients, but we do have some of note and a lot of emollient ingredients. So overall, I was kind of impressed with it. I don't know. At least some of the ingredients that they included as beneficial ingredients actually play directly to a sunscreen instead of just some random things. So... I don't know. Overall, 
I was happy with it. Um, then we've got acneogenic ingredients. And this surprised me because it does have a bit of a thicker, creamy texture to it. But it only has one ingredient of note for acne-prone skin, which is PEG-100 stearate, which is a slightly comedogenic ingredient. But that's it. So overall, I was pretty impressed with that. So if you have acne-prone skin, uh, this is a great option. And there's not a lot of really great options out there. So this is a good one. Then we get to animal testing. And unfortunately, Bioderma is not cruelty-free, which I always... Every time I review a product of theirs, I always have to Google it because I always think in the back of my head they are. But they're not. So that's important to note. Then we get to performance, and this one will absolutely highly protect your skin from sun damage from UVA and UVB rays. Highly protect your skin, like very good protection. Lasts pretty well throughout the day. It can become a little bit greasy towards the very end of the day after uh, eight or nine hours of wear. It can start to look a little shiny, but not terribly so. Overall, I was pretty impressed with this sunscreen for so many reasons. High, high protection. Uh, several unique beneficial ingredients, great for acne prone skin, uh, well packaged, well formulated. So overall, I was more impressed than uh, not. So um, then we get to the price and this is the full size, which is 1.33 ounces, 40 milliliters, which is a bit tinier than most other sunscreens also. Um, and it retails for about $24, making it 60 cents a milliliter making it a bit more expensive per milliliter than a lot of other sunscreens I've reviewed, but it's still uh, rather affordable for something that's so effective. So overall, with a 15 being a perfect score, this one got a 14, which is pretty darn good. Yeah, so anyway, I'm interested in hearing from you guys if you've had a chance to try this one out. And uh, if you have what your thoughts are or if you've tried any of the other Bioderma sunscreens out, uh, what have you tried and how have you liked it? So leave a comment. I love hearing from you guys. Be sure to join us on our live stream May 2nd at 2 p.m. Central Time. And thank you guys so much.